Hello everyone and welcome to Financial Accounting. Uh, in today's video we're going to go over chapter 6 which covers inventories. And I would consider this chapter to be a continuation of chapter 5 where we are going over merchandising businesses or retail businesses. So one of the key accounts for uh, retail businesses is inventory. So we're going to talk about uh, inventory, how it's treated, the, the, um, the, how we secure it or protect it and why we need to protect it. And then we're also going to go over the cost flow of inventory. So the first thing that we're going to be talking about is the control of inventory. And there are two primary reasons or objectives of control over inventory uh, as we're going to see. The first one is to protect the inventory from damage or theft, or what we call it safeguarding inventory. So protecting inventory from theft or damage, that's one of the reasons we have inventory in warehouses that are usually locked and there's some kind of... Uh, uh, secure secure way uh, that doesn't allow anybody to get into the warehouse. Uh, the other reason for uh, the control of inventory is to be able to report inventory on the financial statements in a correct value. Uh, inventory is usually in retail businesses is a, uh, is a very big and to get an accurate value of, of the inventory of the financial statements sometimes it's challenging. So we want to create a system, an accounting system that can help report inventory in the financial statements correctly and accurately. So, uh, when we talk about safe, safeguarding inventory or protecting or inventory, there are controls for uh, protecting inventory that begins as soon as the inventory is ordered. So, not, not just the inventory is received, it's just by the time we order the inventory. So, there are a few documents I want you to be aware of and their existence and their meaning. Uh, and one of these documents is the purchase order. So a purchase order is an inventory control document that authorizes the purchase of the inventory from an approved vendor. In large companies, they cannot just order from any supplier or vendor. They have to have a pre-accepted or pre-approved list of vendors or suppliers. So um, they have to send these pre-approved vendors a purchase order, which is something that tells them we need this kind of quantity of these specific items. And then the, the vendor or the supplier would send these items to our company. Uh, once we receive them, we have to create what's called the receiving report. And it's, the receiving report establishes an initial record of the rec receipt of the inventory. So we count exactly what we received. And the purpose of receiving report is to uh, make sure that what we receive match what we ordered because in some cases um, the supplier or the vendor might send more items or less items compared to what we ordered. So we compare the purchase order to the receiving report, make sure that um, the quantity matches, the items match, um, so that way uh, we accept the inventory. Another important thing is the inventory invoice and the inventory invoice it's a document that's issued by the vendor or the supplier and it just shows the quantity sent and uh, the price of these items. So also we have to double check that the vendor's invoice matches the receiving report that we issued. The inventory uh, ledger or what we call it the subsidiary inventory ledger provides a record of the amount of inventory available and helps keep inventory quantities at proper levels. So uh, like the ledger where we have separate accounts for in the business in, in one record, we have something called the subsidiary inventory ledger where we have all the items of inventory, each one in a separate page, and we have the, the purchase and the sales of each one of these items in one record which we call the subsidiary inventory ledger. So the good thing about the subsidiary inventory ledger is that it tells you exactly how many items we have from every specific inventory item we have. So controls for safeguarding inventory should include security measures to prevent damage and on customer employee theft because this is very, very common. So shoplifting is a problem for many retail businesses uh, and also employee theft. So we want to make sure that we have uh, a good control system that will protect inventory from these kind of theft and damages. So how we report the inventory? A physical inventory, or what we call it, account of inventory, should be taken near year end. So every year we should do a physical count. 
which is the physical inventory, sometimes we call it count of inventory. Uh, why we do that? To make sure that the quantity of inventory reported in the financial statement is accurate and it matches what we have in our warehouses. After the quantity of inventory in hand is determined, the cost of the inventory is assigned for reporting in, for reporting in the financial statements. So once we know the quantity, we know the cost, we calculate the cost, and then we report about the correct value in the financial statements. Now let's talk about an important subject related to inventory, which is the inventory cost flow assumptions. Uh, the reason we're talking about this is because not all our inventory items are purchased at the same time, and not all of them are purchased um, with the same cost, and even for the sim same inventory item. So let's say we are a company that sells any product, let's say cell phones, and a specific kind of cell phone. Uh, one time we bought it at 500, another time we bought it at 600, and another time we bought it at 700. And all these three different purchase transactions, they constitute our, um, our inventory balance. But the problem is the cost of each of these items are not the same. So how can we decide what is the cost of the item that we sold? Should we use the 500, the 600, or the 700? So there are different approaches that can be used and uh, we'll see how to, to do the mathematics and the accounting for each one of these methods. So in such cases, when an item is sold, it's necessary to determine its cost using a cost flow assumption and related inventory costing method. So let's see this figure. So there are three different methods that are typically known in inventory costing method. One is called first in, first out, and we give it the abbreviation FIFO. There is also last in, first out, and it has the abbreviation LIFO. And then there's the weighted average. So the first one, which is FIFO, the cost flow is in the order in which the costs were incurred. So the first items purchased are the first items to be sold. So it's like as if we have um, a box here. When we buy every, anything new, we put it on the top, and the sold are taken from the bottom. So usually the sold items are the very old items, and the new items are, are, are left till later on. It's, it's exactly like whenever you are buying milk uh, and, and you have some leftover milk, you don't want to uh, allow the old milk go expired. So what you do is that you start consuming the old mil milk until it's gone and then you start using what you get later. So that's the idea of first in, first out. So the first, in, the first items purchased are the first items to be sold. There's another approach which is called the last in first out. And in this case, the, the cost flow is in the reverse order in which the costs were incurred. So in other words, the ones that are purchased last are the first to be sold. And it's like, imagine uh, you have a packed fridge and you can't reach to the, to the back and anything that you got and put on the front, you're going to take from the front and, and you're not going to go um, to get anything from the back. So the last items purchased are the first items to be sold. Uh, and the third cost flow is what we call the weighted average or the average method. So in this case, like remember I used 500, 600, and 700, we add them together, divided by three, and then that would be the, the, average, uh, the average price or average cost. Uh, the thing is um, why we call it weighted average because in my example, I used 500, 600, and 700. I assume maybe I bought 100 units of each one of these categories. But what if we have different number of items? In this case, we have to uh, weight uh, the cost of each of these items. And we'll see the calculation for that shortly. So let's assume that three identical units of merchandise are purchased during May um, as follows. We have the May 10th, and uh, this is... Uh, we purchased one unit at $9, and then on May 18th, which is eight days later, we purchased another unit for $13, and then on May 24th, we purchased a third unit for $14. And you can see here the cost is going up, which is typical in, in like inflation, especially the uh, inflation that we experience normally in any, any country. So the total cost for the three items that we purchased is $36. Um, dollars. And these are three units, so the average cost per unit would be $12. That's under the assumption that we're using the average unit. 
So assume that, that one unit is sold on May 30th for $20. That's the selling price. Depending upon which unit was sold, the gross profit varies from $11 to $6. And we can see that, like the selling price is $20. Uh, that's the selling price for the item that we have. But the cost is a question. Should we consider the sale to be the $9 item, the $13 or the $14? Because depending on this, we'll be able to know what is the value of the gross profit, which is the difference between sales and cost of goods sold. If we assume that the May 11th unit was sold, then the gross profit would be 11, and then the end inventory would be the remaining two items, which is 13 and 14 for a total of 27. But if we assume that we sold the unit that was purchased on May 18th, then in this case, the gross profit would be only $7, which is 20 minus the 13, and the ending inventory would be the 9 plus the 14, which is $23. But if we assume that the the item that was sold is the last item purchased, and in this case the cost of goods sold would be 14, and the gross profit would be 6, and the ending inventory would be 22, which is the 9 plus the 13, the remaining two units that we purchased earlier. So you can see, based on the method that we're using, we are going to end up having different gross profit and different ending inventory. So in accounting, we have to decide which approach are we going to use, and we have to be consistent in the method we're using. So there are four methods that we're going to be talking about. One of, one of them is called the specific identification inventory cost flow method, which is what we've just seen. We decide which item was sold. And this is always easy if we have product that has, uh, or products that have serial numbers, or we can identify them, or especially if they are smaller in number. So in this case, we can really track the cost of each one of these items. But imagine that we are selling items that are very generic. It's very difficult to, to differentiate between what was purchased first and what was purchased last. So the specific identification inventory cost flow method might not be easy. But under the specific method, the unit sold is identified with a specific purchase. Um, the end inventory is made up of the remaining units on hand. In FIFO, um, which is first in, first out, the first units purchased are assumed to be sold, and the end inventory is made up of the most recent purchases. In the LIFO, which is last in, first out, the last units purchased are assumed to be sold, and the end inventory is made up of the first purchases. And then a method that just um, do some kind of compromise where it just takes an average is the weighted average inventory cost flow method, sometimes called the average cost flow method. Uh, the cost of the unit sold and in and, and, and the inventory is a weighted average of the purchase cost. So the purchase costs are weighted by the quantities purchased at each cost. Therefore, the term which we use is weighted average. So <clears throat> let's see this uh, calculation here so we can get a better understanding. So we have um, under FIFO. The income statement, we have the sales 20, we have the cost of goods sold 9, the gross profit was 11, and the balance sheet items are the remaining two units for $27. So this is going to go to the um, income statement, that's part of the income statement, that goes to the balance sheet. If we're using LIFO, we're going to see that the gross profit is going to be smaller, okay, especially that the prices are going or the cost is going up, and the balance sheet value of inventory is also going to be lower. And the weighted average is something in the middle. So we see here that the, the average cost is going to be 12. So the cost of goods sold is 12 for the one item that we sold, which is in between the 14 and the 9. And then the gross profit is 8. Again, it's an in-between number between the 6 and the 11. And then the inventory balance is 24, which is the remaining two units at average cost of 12. All right, so I hope this gave you like a quick idea of the different methods for the inventory cost flow. So we'll stop here. In the next video, we'll see a little bit more uh, detailed presentation of the three methods.